guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm here at Auto Nation Toyota in sunny Pinellas Park, Florida, and we have it. This is the all new redesigned 2020 Toyota Corolla. And guess what? If we're gonna bring it to you for the first one, we're going big. This one is fully loaded, the XSE trim level. So let's talk a little bit about Toyota history. Toyota has actually been selling cars here in the United States since 1957, if you could believe that. That first year, they only sold about 227 cars, one of them being one of the original Land Cruisers. Fast forward to now, they're one of the biggest car companies in the world, and they're really you know, branching out and working with a lot of other brands to help them out with their engineering technology and all that kind of stuff. What we're gonna find with this Corolla, which think about, the Corolla has been around since around 1967, 1968. With the new Corolla, you're gonna get some really aggressive styling, really large assortment, assortment of technology, and of course, that reliability that Toyota is known for. So let's go ahead and dive into this all new 2020 Corolla. Right off the bat, you'll notice that things have gotten a little bit more aggressive. It seems that they wanted to, to make it look a little bit more sinister, if there's a better word for that. I like what they did with the continuation of the headlight design. Really wonderful how it integrates into this front top portion here. I think one of my favorite parts is how the front fascia kind of extends a little out. Now I am gonna zonk it because these are fake vents. I wish they would just smooth it out instead of having the actual grill pattern there. But I do like the lighting and I love this little lower side spoiler lip that kind of extends a little bit. Now it would have been nice to kind of carry some of it out to the front, but as we come to the front of the grill, nice large opening. I like the dark gray metallic that goes around all of this front area. You can see the little extra design that they put in that lower section there. And then as we work our way up, it's kind of interesting how they've gone to this split level design. Very unique and it really makes the car look 21st century and stand out. But from passenger to driver's side, really aggressive. And that's something that in a word, you don't hear being used with Corolla. But here we are talking about it. As we wor uh, work our way around the bend, I really like how they take the uh, headlight housing and really integrate it nicely into the fender. As we drop down, these are 18 inch wheels. Love the style. You have that brushed aluminum, the darker gray. It really works perfect with this white. This pearlescent white sparkles like a white diamond. I'm really liking it. And I just think it makes the car look, like I said, a little bit more sporty than maybe Corollas in the past. As we go down the side, of course we spilled some of that paint on the side mirrors. I'm happy that they went flat black here. I think that over time this will take a better beating from the sun and it'll just look better overall. Got a great corner windows that's gonna bring in more light, help with your peripheral vision. This one does have a sunroof at the XSE trim. I know some people might say, well, I want a panoramic sunroof. You know what? I think that's a great setup for this particular car. One thing I would love to see though, is if you got the XSE trim, how about black out the roof? I think that would just kind of set it off, especially when they're going for a more sportier, aggressive look. Speaking of that look, you'll notice the lower side sill there that extends out from the doors, nice body lines. And as we work our way back, the way that you have the rear quarter window comes to a nice point with another flat black area. And then to wrap it all off, instead of just going gloss black like so many other manufacturers, this, this, it's like a gunmetal metallic gray. Love the color. Tail lights are sexy. I think that it was great the way that they brought it all the way from one side to another, and I'm glad that they went black. Some other manufacturers, I don't like the way that they're bringing the red, and then what happens is at night, you step on the brake uh, pedal, and it doesn't light up. I like that, that it's just nice black. As we drop down, twin exhaust, really think that's kind of different that you're not gonna see on maybe like a, 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 you know, a Nissan product or a Mazda or whatnot, but I do like the twin snorkel exhaust. This is something I wish they just would have went smooth. If they would have kept it just that gray, gun gray color and just smooth it out, but it is this faux vent. So, you know, take it or leave it. Some people I think will love it. Some people will hate it, but you know, it is what it is. You do have a very cool looking, uh, you know, simulated diffuser down here, but very clean off the back end of the car. And I think from front to back, that's really its biggest asset is just how clean the looks are. Let's go ahead though, pop the hood and see what we're working with power wise. 
All right, guys, hood is popped on the 2020 Corolla. What's nice is Toyota doesn't put a bunch of plastic all over the place. You could clearly see that two liter inline four engine. You have the coil packs right up top, one, two, three, four, that tells you it's a four cylinder. Those are just little things that you could look for if you never looked underneath the hood of your car. But you're looking, like I said, two liter inline four, producing around 168 horsepower. This one, it's mated to a CVT transmission. Now, what's unique about Toyotas is that there is an actual gear in it. First gear is fixed. The rest of it is all through traditional CVT setup. Zero to 60, you're looking at around 7.9 seconds. Top speed around 118 miles an hour. It'll do 31 in the city, 38 on the highway, and it weighs in around 3,150 pounds. And then the thing at the end of the day, sitting on this global architecture, you're gonna have a uh, chassis that is a better riding. It's gonna give you some more room inside and everything else. So great layout for your perfect daily driver. Let's go ahead and fire it up and see what does this Corolla sound like. All right, guys, we're in the redesigned 2020 Toyota Corolla. As soon as I got in, very comfortable. Now, if you're wondering, well, Joe, I like this car. I want to maybe get one. What's the price on it? This one, remember, it's fully loaded XSE trim level. You're looking at $26,800 for the MSRP. But give Chris a call because I'm telling you, here at AutoNation, they're, they're blowing these out, even the 2020s. When we go to the doors, let's see what you have. There is a lot of dark material, but you know what? I like what they did with the arm pull. Now, I know some of you hate the gloss black because of fingerprints, but guess what? It's a great looking arm pull. I like the armrest, the blue contrast stitching, and I think that that top panel, that simulated leather look, looks really, really great and it's super soft. As you go from the door panel to the dash, more of that blue contrast stitching, very slow, uh, excuse me, very uh, soft material, both top and bottom here. You have a nice, large infotainment screen, great visibility and font. You could go into your apps, whatever you want to do to get through the different features. On this Corolla, just like the others, I like the way that they integrate the AC controls. Now, I'm not a big fan on the Camry, but on this car, I like it. It's simple, easy to use. You don't have to um, fumble with it. Very simple. Now, as we come down, soft material, push button start. You have heated seats for the driver and passenger. A nice little cubby, but my zonk is there's no USB up here. So I'm a little confused why they would put a cubby up here, but you do have the simulated leather. This is gonna control that CVT transmission, leather boot, you have um, electric e-brake, some gloss black and that silver trim, two cup holders. Here's the key fob, nice looking key fob. And then armrest, it's at a great height. You could extend it, blue contrast stitching, 12 volt and a USB, so this is where you're gonna be connected. And then the seats, it's a simu uh, uh, it's an assortment of leather and then this cloth material, this I'm gonna zonk. I don't like the design of it. I don't like the blue here, but you know what? It does hold you in place and the seats are very comfortable, especially the bottom portion, which for a taller, a taller person like myself, six feet tall, it's great to have. You do have the sunroof, which is a nice touch. Vitamin D comes on in, but why don't you come on over to the business end and I'll show you behind the wheel. All right, guys, business end in the 2020 Toyota Corolla. I like the steering wheel, very uh, nice leather around the whole wheel. It's got a great feel to it. Great looking horn button, little bit of silver trim. And I like the way that the buttons are kind of flush perfectly, not kind of protruding in any which way. You do get paddles if you want to go through the simulated gears in that CVT transmission and a very attractive, smart looking dash. You can see the uh, tachometer over on your left, the speedometer in the middle. You got a digital display, great color, great font. Hold on one second, my phone, my phone's ringing. Yes? Oh, Toyota? Okay. All right, thanks. I just got a phone call from Toyota. There's actually a USB up here. So all the way tucked up in there, there's no way that you can see because you gotta probably sit in the seat upside down and backwards to be able to see it. But there is a one USB jack over here so that you could successfully use that cubby. So I'm gonna recant the zonk. We do have a USB. But overall, even with the sunroof, I got plenty of room. You have full electric assist on the seat, which is a nice touch. 
and really get you comfortable driving this car. Let's go ahead though and check out the back seat and see how your passengers are gonna feel. All right guys, back seat time in the Corolla. You know what? It actually wasn't too bad getting in through the door opening even though I'm taller. Once I'm in, I'm sitting pleasantly upright. I'm not hunched over. My head is not touching because it was smart. Toyota kind of scraped out some of this headliner to give you a little bit more room. What I do like is they went full leather on the seats. You know, some of these other companies, they put the black plastic. I like the leather, a nice pouch here. You get a little cubby. My only complaint, my only zonk is gonna be, where is my connectivity back here? No USB, no 12 volt, and no rear AC. A little bit surprising because this is the top trim level, but where you're really gonna see this Corolla shine is when we take it for a spin. Speaking of taking it for a spin, when you're ready, you can put down the armrest, nice soft material, horizontal cup holder, which I like to see because it gives you maximum room, and the seats are very comfortable. But why don't we go ahead, pop the trunk, and see what type of junk we could put in the back of a Corolla. All right, guys, time to pop the trunk on the 2020 Corolla. Real simple, nice and light. Look how light that is. Uh, one finger, look at that. Open it up. What is great about this car is look at how wide the opening is to the trunk. That's an important feature on a car this size to have a nice opening. Once you get things in, those back seats are gonna be doing the 60-40 split, give you even more room into the actual cabin area. But you know what? That's what this car is about. It's about giving you some versatility. Everybody's running to go get an SUV or a CUV or a whatever, a DVD. Oh, wait, that's a movie. But anyways, something like that, thinking that they need a bigger vehicle. But with something like this, you're gonna get great MPGs, you're gonna get great drivability, and you do have usability out of it. But let's go ahead, get to the best part. Let's take this Toyota Corolla for a spin. All right, guys, we left Auto Nation Toyota and we're in the 2020 Toyota Corolla. I'm gonna go ahead and get on the loud pedal. Now, obviously, you're not gonna win any drag races in this car, but that's not what this car is about. Uh, being naturally aspirated, the nice thing is you're not worrying about or waiting for any boost to build or anything. The power builds linear through the whole power band, and you're gonna get that great fuel economy and awesome Toyota reliability. I mean, that is a no-brainer. I'm really digging the gauge instrumentation. As it got a little bit more uh, dark in this area because of the trees, you could really see all those colors that I was telling you about, the blue on the speedometer and tachometer and uh, the other analog gauges, the fuel and the, the coolant, like that. Those are nice little touches that I think are gonna draw people to the car uh, because it has that 21st century flair on it. Now. Seating position is great. I was able to get the seat exactly where I wanted it. Remember, this is XSE trim, so you get that fully functional electric seat for the driver especially. That's really the most important part. And I really like just how long the bottom portion is. Very comfortable, but also very supportive. It's not like you're sitting on a waterbed. And I like that, because some, some seats, it's like either you go too soft or too hard. Toyota really hit the nail on the head. Looking out the front windshield, great visibility you don't see the hood so that might be a good thing for some people or a challenge for others depending if you have to park this in a tight space but the good news is overall size on the corolla you're not driving this big humongous vehicle um, but let's go ahead and see what the handling is like on this new global architecture that all the toyotas are switching over to but very very smooth the cabin is very quiet as well. You do get some of that engine noise, but wind noise is not very high, which is great. I like the feedback that I'm getting from the wheel. Uh, it's got a good weight to it. You know, a lot of electric steering wrecks, uh, they, they get a little either too soft or too hard. This one has a great weight to it. And as you're going through these nice bends, it feels really, really good. Let me go ahead and pick up the pace a little bit because I know there's a right-hander coming up. Just to test out to see how the car handles when it comes to shifting its weight around. On the brakes, great feedback. Lane keep assist telling me, hey, you're getting close to that white line. I, I got you, thank you for the heads up. But that's really good safety that's gonna keep you uh, and your family very safe, all that safety tech that's in the car. But you know what? 
car handles well, it's gonna do exactly what you need it to do. And what this car is made for is to be that perfect daily driver, uh, get you great MPGs, and you're still just driving an internal combustion engine, no hybrid assist or anything like that. But very smooth, the, the, when it comes to pedal modulation, great feedback from the brake pedal as you are putting more and more pressure on it. And then pulling out. Nice and smooth, I like the way it tells me what my uh, what the speed limit is there. You have very easy access to the whole infotainment set up here. You could click your home button. Uh, you could go into menu. There's all your different uh, things. And with the car, you do have Apple CarPlay. So soon, they're saying, keep your fingers crossed, Android Auto should be added to the list as well. All right, guys, I wanna show you something. So like I pointed out earlier, you do have a sport mode button right in front of the shifter when you hit it. The instrumentation, the speedometer turns red. Let me do a little acceleration test. So what the sport mode does is it quickens up that sensitivity to the throttle, which is really nice. And that's gonna give you a little bit better driving experience. And another thing as well, like many other uh, competitors in this segment, when you go into a sport mode, it kind of keeps the RPMs up a little bit higher so that when you get out of throttle and then back on, it's not like you're waiting forever to um, get back into that power band. So I don't know if you could tell, but I get out of the throttle and it stays a little bit higher and then I get back on and then we're off and running. And then if you want to switch out of it, then you just hit the button again and you're right back to normal and nobody's the wiser. So nice to have little features to tailor whatever your driving situation is. And that is another great thing with the 2020 Toyota Corolla. I'm gonna go ahead and make a right hand turn here. I think overall, I, I, I'm surprised I'm saying this, I actually think I like driving the Corolla more than I do the Camry, which is kind of shocking just because of how smooth it is and stuff. I really, and I like the size of it. It's not too big, it's not too small. I think they hit the nail on the head with the redesign. But we're gonna go ahead, get back to AutoNation and wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a split second. All right guys, it's been an amazing day here at AutoNation Toyota. Definitely gotta give a huge shout out and a thank you to Chris. Definitely give him a call if you are in the market for a new Toyota vehicle. But these are the types of things that I know you want to see on the channel, and that's why we're bringing it to you. All these types of different compact cars, and the whole plethora of Toyota's lineup is going to be coming to you from AutoNation Toyota, so stay tuned for that. If you have any comments or questions, go ahead and type that out in that section. If you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile coming back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Raise Rise family. Make sure that if you want to help us here on Radies Rides, keep making this great content for you. Click the link in the description. It takes you right to Spreadshirt. Every bit helps. Speaking of help, we can't do this without Big Guns O'Neill stepping in for Big Guns McGee. Big Guns McGee decided to go on a month-long vacation. Who does that? I've asked them that 20 times. I don't know about you. No vacation for us here on Radies Rides. We'll be bringing it to you. And thank you, O'Neill, for your hard work. Keep taking your protein supplements. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.